Yeah, uh, like so many Sooner fans, I had to uh, replay that final 1.8 seconds over and over and over again. And, uh, yeah, uh, the officials got it right, though, okay? Uh, once that backboard lights up, if you still have the ball on any part of your hand before that sh shot's released, it's not going to count. And for a few seconds, um, we thought that Oklahoma, again, could add another chapter to Sooner Magic. And for Buddy Heald, as many great memories as, he, as he's given us, and despite having a horrible night shooting tonight, uh, that would have really erased a lot of those bad shooting memories for this evening against West Virginia with a miraculous finish from half court. But once I saw those West Virginia players, you know, waving it off and starting their own celebration, um, yeah, uh, so much for that. But the way the Sooners played that final minute, the way, the way they played the final minute just, and just completely debacled, they completely broke down after having the three-point lead with a minute to go. And, you know, Spangler, who had a good game, by the way, um, you know, with double digits and points, and he was 4-4 four for four at the foul line, missed those two free throws, and, and that was critical. You know, um, that, that, that was big-time critical. You know, Page came through for West Virginia. He hit two free throws, and then the backbreaker um, to about 16 seconds to go, the jump shot, and just like that, the Mountaineers were up by a point, and then um, held on. Just, just a heartbreaking loss for the Sooners. But then again, if you didn't watch the game, um, you probably would have been surprised that OU even got to that point to where they were up three, because... In the first half, they were getting torched. They were getting torched in the in the paint. They were getting torched on the glass, especially offensive rebounding. They gave up so many opportunities to West Virginia, and the Mountaineers took advantage of several of those offensive rebounds. And they fell right into the game of the Mountaineers. West Virginia presses, forces turnovers, and Oklahoma gladly obliged. In fact, for the game, about 20 turnovers for the Sooners. Several of those turnovers led to West Virginia points. And that's probably the most frustrating part about this game, okay? Yeah, there was the last minute, you know, ugh, the Sooners performed. Okay, Let, let's face it. Give credit to West Virginia for taking advantage of it, but the Sooners again, ugh, last minute of the game. The turnovers are hard for me to digest, okay? Buddy Hill did not have a great shooting night, and that's putting it mildly. And his worst shooting night that I could ever remember him having, okay? He had the great shooting night the night before, 39 points. And, you know, biggest reason why the Sooners won against Iowa State. On Friday, one of the biggest reasons why the Sooners didn't win, to be fair, okay? His teammates had to step up. I mean, they, they really, really did. But in Buddy's defense, he, he played nearly the entire game on, on Thursday. If I'm going to play devil's advocate. And he, he put it all on line. And toward the end... Of the Iowa State game, there was a five-minute stretch where he didn't score. Maybe fatigue set in. I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that on Friday, West Virginia presented more problems because they press. Maybe he was tired. Maybe, you know, he just didn't have it. But the bottom line, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes, even for your star, the ball doesn't go in the bucket, okay? If that happens, that happens, okay? It happens to the best players. But as a team, when you turn it over about 20 times, that's hard for a coach and the fans to really accept, because then you give yourself no chance. And in the case of West Virginia, you play the game right into their hands, and they get those transition buckets, or they get good looks from three-point range. And tonight, uh, Javon Carter just absolutely killed OU. Killed him, especially from three-point range. He couldn't be stopped for those first 25 minutes. You know, as soon as close out the first half well, only down by a point. And because the way they played... The final nine minutes of that first half, for the most part, it was junk. And then the opening of the second half, um, West Virginia took that one-point lead and, and ballooned it, okay? Again, it was a play of Carter. But we saw, you know, uh, Page come through for, for West Virginia in, in the final in the final minute because he, he hadn't really shot the ball well, but West Virginia had, had another option. The Sooners outshot West Virginia from the field, Okay by about 10 percentage points. It doesn't mean that much, though, if West Virginia is getting more field goal attempts than you, 19 more. That pretty much negated the advantage right there. 
Mountaineers shot a little bit better from the free throw line too. The Sooners, that made a big difference. Made a big difference. So, coming away from this game, i kind of got mixed feelings. On one hand, you know, if, if Buddy Heald even plays an average game, pretty good chance the Sooners win. And, of course, he was b- below that, far below average. On the other hand, though, the Sooners not only got good production tonight from Woodard in the first half, and, by the way, didn't see him throughout much of that stretch. And I don't know why. Um, maybe injury, I, I don't know, or maybe Christian James, who came off the bench and had the game of his life. He was double digits in points. Maybe that was a better alternative for OU at the time. I mean, there, you know, OU's bench tonight, I think, got 16 points and was comparable to West Virginia's bench. That was encouraging. But also to the play of Isaiah Cousins, who we saw when OU was down by 11 with about six minutes to go, was responsible largely for the Sooners able to cut into the deficit and eventually, you know, take the lead with about, you know, about a minute to go, um, about a minute and a half to go up three. And then, of course, he had that traveling violation. Ugh, wish he had called time in that situation. But the point was that other players were stepping up when Heald was struggling. So I take away from that that, yeah, the Sooners can still play with top ten competition when their star is having an off night. I take away from that. So, congrats to West Virginia. You know, they made the plays down the stretch. Sooners didn't. Sooners missed free throws. West Virginia made three or four down the stretch. OU couldn't hit field goals. Of course, West Virginia got the winning field goal with under 20 to go. So, for the Mountaineers, um, they split with Kansas during the regular season. And I think West Virginia, win or lose, is going to get a number two seed. I think for Oklahoma, if they had won on Friday against West Virginia, and let's say that they would have beaten Kansas, which would have been for the first time this year on Saturday night, there's that outside shot that the Sooners could have a number one seed. But if things would have played according to plan, you know, based upon what we've seen, Kansas would have beaten Oklahoma. I think if that would have happened, OU would be a number two seed. I think Oklahoma is still going to be a number two seed. So as far as seeding goes... I don't think tonight meant anything, unless OU would have beaten Kansas on Saturday. Again, I don't think that would have happened. Um, so I think Oklahoma's going to be a number two seed, and I think they're going to be playing close to home in Oklahoma City. I think West Virginia's going to be a two seed, and I think Kansas still has a great shot at not only being a number one, which I think is a guarantee, but being the number one overall seed, Okay, which will really favor them in bracketing, and they're, they're going to be playing in, uh, you know, in Des Moines, Iowa, which is... For them, uh, about a two-and-a-half-hour trip, and they'll pack that place. Kansas travels very well, especially for the NCAA tournament. But I think Oklahoma is in good line for a number two seed. You know, Xavier, one of the top teams in the country, they got beat in the Big East semifinals to Seton Hall, so that really, really helps. Um, but I think Big 12 is going to be well-represented. I still think Texas Tech gets in, despite the unexplainable loss to TCU in round one of the Big 12 tournament on Wednesday. I still think Tech gets in. And I think Texas is probably looking at a, a six seed, perhaps maybe a seven seed. Um, Iowa State probably uh, a five or a six seed, and Baylor um, could be looking at a four or a five. Okay, but I think West Virginia is going to get a number two regardless. Oklahoma is going to get a two, and I think Kansas is going to get a number one. And we'll see how the Big Twelve does in the uh, Big Twelve in the um, NCAA tournament. Of course, the selection show will be Sunday. And the Sooners, if all goes well, should be playing in Oklahoma City Friday and Sunday at Chesapeake. And I would suspect that they will get through the first weekend. Um, We'll see what happens that second weekend, though, for the Sweet 16. Um, If I'm counting all my chickens right now before they hatch, it's all going to depend on matchups. And, of course, how the Sooners learn from what happened against West Virginia. Congratulations to West Virginia. Oh, you tried to make it three in a row. Looked like they had victory in hand, but Buddy Hill's half-court shot. Just a hair too late. But congrats to the Mountaineers. And we'll wish the Sooners good luck in the upcoming NCAA tournament. March Madness should be fun. Boomer Sooner.